Hi everyone, it's Alison from Crochet Connections and today we're going to be doing the humble but very useful granny squirt. Okay, so for today's video, this is what we're making. It's just a standard granny square and I've tried to do it as a basic beginner's granny square and I've done just a single row of color change on the outside because I am going to be using this yellow square in another project. Um, I'll show you two ways to color change. One um, casting on with a brand new color and one where you just run your colors which is um, as you can see here just running them up and down and I will explain that a little bit later on. Um, now I am film filming <laughs> this at the end after I have obviously completed this. So um, in the very last clip you'll hear me going on about that. <laughs> so <laughs> please excuse that. Um, obviously we have the standard um, next clip will be telling you what you need. It's pretty basic items. Um, I do hope I, I tried, like I said, I tried to keep this to a basic and beginner level. I think I may have um, gone a little bit beyond beginner steps. I tried to keep it as simple, but sometimes I forget myself. Um, if you have any questions, I will leave all the details where you can contact me um, in the description bar and even a screen capture at the end of the video. Otherwise, I do hope this video will be helpful to you. I hope um, you can pick up some tricks somewhere. Um, if you have any hints or tips or anything you think I might benefit from, please do let me know because I think we can always learn something somewhere along the line. Um, and something my husband learnt from a, a gentleman he used to work with, um, the saying is, if you don't learn something every day, you're dead. <laughs> So you learn something new every day, and the day you don't, you're dead, basically. And that's pretty true. So I think we can always learn something new. So without further ado, let's get on to the basic beginner granny square with one row of colour change. Okay, so um, for the granny square, if you're going to do a solid colour, obviously you're only going to need one. Um, ball of yarn, but if you're going to switch colors, you're going to need more. So I've got uh, two colors. I have green and yellow and Obviously, we're going to need some scissors a Crochet hook to match your yarn. I probably actually need to go up either. I've got a four uh, Millimeter crochet hook, but I probably need a 4.5 or a five millimeter. So I will switch that out and um, optional are some stitch markers and I just use bobby pins so um, just whatever's available you can use uh, scrap yarn um, I just I you can buy stitch markers um, yeah if you actually come across any you know more inventive ways to use items as stitch markers let me know because I'm always looking for you know items that can be used in many ways so yeah okay let's move on I'm just gonna be back in a second with a larger sized hook okay so uh, this video is going to have uh, two purposes I'm going to show you how to make a granny square um, as a beginner and then um, I'm going to I'm going to do that with one color for um, the first few rows and then on the last row I'm going to show you how to change colors because I'm going to use the yellow square for another project um, and that's going to be the large heart shaped granny square because I really 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 hate wasting yarn and I mean I have a ton of it but I hate wasting yarn and I also hate sewing in ends. So um, yeah, that's how my mind works. <laughs> okay, so um, I'm going to zoom you in so you get a better view of what I'm doing. We're going to start with our slip knot 
and remember um, from if you watched my previous videos on how to um, you know fingers and holding yarn um, if you're Australian even in America I think um, the wiggles you know they have you know they, they hold their fingers like this and they do their little you know dance move um, it's very politically incorrect but you know it it's a bit like a weapon you know that the police use but I prefer wiggle fingers you know and they sing hot potato and yeah mashed banana and so on and so forth so that's um, to hold your yarn over and to tension it um, yeah and you'll also mention hear me mention triangles and things like that um, so yeah okay I'm gonna zoom you in and I may have to adjust my camera angle okay so I'm using my left hand um, my I learned how to do this um, from Mikey on the Crochet Crowd and I've found it's probably one of the easiest ways to demonstrate how to do the slip knot instead of trying to excuse me lay the yarn down in a circle and pretzels and everything and that just confused me um, so yeah um, I lay the yarn on my hand over my ring finger and um, my middle finger and I you do not want to do this tightly it's just enough to put some tension on it I wrap the yarn over my finger twice so that's once this is twice and then I hold it between my two fingers and my thumb again so you can see it's um, coming down again and I have two loops sorry two loops now I'm going to take my back loop on my finger and I'm going to pull it up and over the top of this loop but I'm going to leave it on the front part of my finger so up and over see that's why you only want it um, with a little bit of tension because we've got to move these loops okay now I'm going to get the second loop which is was the front loop but is now the back loop and I'm going to do the same thing but this time I'm going to go up over and off so up over and off and I'm going to pull this loop tight and we have a slip no, knot um, it doesn't matter if you have to pull the front one or the back one just whatever works to get your slip knot okay so we're going to put our hook in see here's where the triangle comes into play to hold our knot when we're crocheting I'm going to zoom out again so we can get started on our chain for our um, granny square okay so what you want to do to start your granny square is to uh, chain four so one and I always move my fingers to hold the chain when I'm teaching so each chain I make I will move my fingers up Okay, so I have four, um, and I'm using a five millimeter hook um, just to make the um, stitches a little bit larger to see. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit more, and because I am so zoomed in, it's probably going to go out of screen shot. That might be a little bit better. There we go. I'm going to be constantly looking to my left. Um, to see if I'm in and out and my hands are going to be constantly doing this okay so now we're going to go into our first uh, chain over here and you want to make sure it's okay see how that loop moves we don't want that loop on the V if you do go into that loop try and make sure um, you know it's under one of the other loops so technically you're only going under one so you want to make sure you go under a loop that does not move and if you're a beginner here is where a stitch marker will come in handy see I loosened that up with my uh, finger and I'm going to put a stitch marker around the chain 
so that when I tighten this back up, I can tell where the original hole is. It's quite hard to see, but you can see I put my hook through. You can see the stitch mark on the side and the hook through the center. Okay. I know I've gone over this before, but you know it doesn't hurt to go over it again. Okay. So once again, I'm just making sure that slip knot is tight, and I am going to pull that stitch marker all the way down. I'm holding my yarn tail out of the way because I'm going to um, crochet over that knot, and I'm going to chain three. So that's one chain, moving my thumb, two, and three. And as you can see, I have kept that triangle there. And I have my, well, sort of my wiggle finger, but it's been kept straight. Okay, now we're going to do two treble crochets right next to that chain three because that chain three is the equivalent of our treble crochet so yarn over go in next to that uh, stitch marker that's why I left the stitch marker in there yarn over the hook again pull up a loop yarn over pull through the first two loops on your hook yarn over and I'm moving my thumb up each time yarn over the last two okay so we do it again yarn over go in yarn over pull up a loop yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two okay so that's what we call a cluster it has three treble crochet in it so chain one, well actually we're going to chain two because the first round of a granny square is always, ha, always has four corners because it always doesn't have any sides, uh, sides, you know, Dr. Evil laser beam hands I call them, um, or speech commas, whatever you want to call them. Um, okay, and we're going to repeat that cluster. So I can remove my stitch marker now because you can see a lot clearly that that hole is there so yarn over go in pull up a loop yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two and repeat two more times yarn over Go in, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, go in, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. That's another cluster, and I'm just going to move all these stitches around the ring so that we have enough space to fit two more clusters on. Okay, so chain two, yarn over, we'll do three more triple crochet. And it doesn't matter if you are running out of space because they will all fit. Unless you did a really tiny chain at the beginning, they will fit. Okay, and we're coming up to closing our 
Oh, one more treble. Coming up to closing our um, our round. So we chain two, and then what we're going to do is we're going to slip stitch into the top of that chain three. So I'm going to get a stitch marker, and I'm going to pull the top two loops. I'm going to loosen them up a bit. Um, because I'm using a 5mm hook, it's a little bit harder to do this. If I was using a 4mm hook, it would probably be a little bit easier. If I really wanted to at the beginning, I could have put a stitch marker in. But, you know, no need. Okay, so now I have my yarn on my hook. I'm going to go under those two loops. Okay, and I'm going to make a slip stitch. And we have completed our first round. Now if you're going to continue using the same colour, you can just slip stitch across. Okay, which I'm going to do. I'm going to slip stitch all the way across. One, I'm slip stitching in the top of the next post. I'll zoom you in. Oh, that's as far as it'll go. And it's not going to play nice. Okay. So I'll show you on this side. You can see I have three posts. One, two, and three. So this is the one we joined in with our slip stitch. And you can see here, this one's a little bit looser. That's the one we slip stitched in again. And if you're going to change colours, I would stop slip stitching there and um, just leave a tail so you could weave it in. But we're going to slip stitch here and then into the chain space again and go up. Okay. Zooming out. So slip stitching in the last post, the top of the last post, and now into the chain space. Okay, now you can chain three again, but I usually use the um, chainless starting uh, stitch. Um, I learned this off the Moogly blog, I learned the original, but I changed it a bit. And um, yeah, I've been doing that for years and she just posted a new video on how to do that. But lots of people have been doing it for a long time apparently. So yeah, okay, so you pull up your loop so it's a little bit taller than a standard double crochet. Okay, then you put your finger or a finger on top of that loop so it does not move. Then you're going to wrap your hook around behind your work so you have two loops on your hook okay then you're going to go into whether it be your stitch or your chain space in my case go in yarn over and pull up a loop so it's like you have a regular double crochet on your hook you have three um, stitch three loops one two and three Okay, then you're going to yarn over and just finish it like normal. But see how I still have my finger on that first loop? I'm a, sorry if it's not um, zoomed in enough, but I don't want to risk it going blurry. So you pull through and you go through the first two loops. And you now have two loops on your, oh my bad, two loops on your hook. You yarn over. And now, because you can place your fingers down the bottom of that post, you can take your finger away. And I've put tension up the top, just enough to pull my hook through comfortably. I've got my yarn over, with my tension up, I'm pulling through, and I've completed the chainless starting post. 
or chain the starting stitch, whatever you want to call it. And that looks more like a um, a treble, or if you're American, a double crochet than this um, chain three down here, which is um, got a large gap between that and the next um, post. See, there's the chain there. And you can see there's a huge gap here and then these two posts are quite close together okay so to make a corner you have a cluster um, chains and then another cluster in that same space and uh, usually the majority of people will make a cluster a chain three then a cluster but some people like to make a cluster a chain two then a cluster I prefer the chain three. So we have uh, one treble, we're going to do two more. Okay, so that is our third treble. We're going to chain three. One, two, three. Into the same space, we're going to do three more treble. Two, that's one. Two and three. And the second round is all corners. Um, it's not until the third round that you will see on the sides above each cluster there will be a chain space. And between, if it's not a um, corner, I made a mistake before, I apologize. Um, the round two actually does have chain spaces, not just corners. My apologies. Um, between each cluster, there will always be a chain space. On the corners, it is a chain two or chain three, but on the sides, it will be usually a chain one, sometimes a chain two. I prefer the chain one. It's usually one more than your corner, so um, one less or whatever you prefer um, but it's always smaller than your corner so I chain one and then I do two more clusters so three trebles one two three chain three one two three and another cluster of three trebles. One, two, oh, one. <laughs> Sorry, I'm counting the yarn overs and pull throughs. Makes two and three. Chain one above the cluster and we'll do a corner. One, two, Three, chain three, one, two, three. And that time I didn't move my thumb up, but I held my uh, hook up so I had enough tension to pull the loops looser. And it helps that I'm using a larger hook than I need to by 0.5 of a millimeter. One, two, Three, chain one, one, two, three, chain three, one. Two, three, chain one, and once again we are about to join to our first stitch. Now when you look at the, um, I'm going to zoom in again, 
hope it's not too blurry. I'm looking through a tiny viewfinder, so... So I'm like... Yeah. Um, you can see that there are the two V, two um, loops to make the V here, then here, so here, here, and here. And this one's a little bit looser, so it's usually easier to go into that one, but I'm still going to pick it up under my loops and loosen it. And I'm just going to put the yarn, working yarn on the right way. You always want to make sure that the yarn, um, see how the yarn is pulling from the front? If I try to pull this side of the loop, see how it's not doing anything, it's not going anywhere? But if I pull the other side of the loop, my finger is making the yarn larger. You always want to make sure that that side of the loop is on the front of your hook. Don't ask me why, you just do. Okay, so I'm going in, yarning over, pulling through, and making a slip stitch. So that's that one done. See how much uh, tighter that is compared to this one down here? There's a huge hole just next to that one. You can really see it compared to up here. Okay, so I can actually show you a better slip stitching across now. Okay, so we're slip stitched in here to join. Going in, it's exactly the same as if you were just going to do a whole bunch of double crochets across the top. One. Two. And three. Okay, once again, we are going to do, well, I'm going to do a chainless starting stitch, and I'll do from this corner to this corner, then I'm going to go away, and I will come back after I've done a couple of rounds, and I'm going to change colours, because it's already 23, 24 minutes, okay? So, see ya. Surprise! We're back and we're back at round four and you can count rounds by going sideways or diagonally. Sideways is a bit tricky because um, you look at it, there's the centre. One, two, three, no. You go one, hole is two, cluster, and then hole is four. So I like to go diagonally. So you start at the centre. One, two, three, four. That's four rounds. So this is round five, and um, we're going to join with the slip stitch as normal. And I just thought I would do a few rounds, a few, you know, stitches down the side, around here a bit, to get, to, you know, the general idea. It's pretty basic. We've pretty much done it over and over. It's just the color change. Um, which I'm going to do on round six. I think I previously said round five, but I'm going with round six for the color change. Um, so yeah, I'm going to do that and I'm probably going to do it in uh, some slow, some fast. So let's hit it.
So we have a cluster, which means we have a chain one. Chain one, space, plus another cluster of three trebles. And this just repeats all the way along the side. So wherever there is a cluster in the row below, there will be a chain space. And where there is a space, there will be a cluster, as you can see. So wherever there is a chain space, you can see I've got a cluster. And wherever there is a cluster above that, there is a chain space. Right, I'm looking through the viewfinder to do this. You see that a bit better now? I've got my finger behind it. So yeah, there's a cluster there and there's a chain space above it. And there is a space here, chain space, and above it there's a cluster. So uh, granny squares are pretty simple to keep track of what you're doing unless you start using a lot of colour changes like we'll see in the grainy heart square I'm actually posting this after I did um, the Granny Heart Square. Yeah, and that's like a sort of a colour block square. It's um, a variation on colour block, so yeah. For Granny Square, it's colour block. Um, you can YouTube colour block because I haven't gone into that yet, so. Yeah. And we've got another corner. So I might do this corner and speed it up a little bit after the corner. Okay, so I'm back to my corner, and there's one really great thing about granny squares is that after you've come a little bit more confident with them, is that you can pretty much, oh, excuse me, um, that's my second line. The thing with granny squares is once you've become a little bit more confident with your crochet and even with granny squares, is that once you've got them started, you don't particularly need to watch what you're doing um, just go by feel like I know I've just done three and there's my uh, next corner see I'm sort of watching what I'm doing because I'm actually looking through the viewfinder I'm not actually watching my hands the only thing I usually do is check that I've done three um, stitches into one space and a chain one and that's about it. And I can actually do granny squares while actually physically staring at the TV or um, reading a book on my computer. <laughs> so yeah. If I turn this way it helps. But then I've got my back to the camera. See there's my shoulder. <laughs> do you like my turquoisey green top? What do you have some of your favourite colours to crochet with? I know sometimes I can't, like, I'll see a pattern and I'll really want to do it because the pattern looks really, really cool, but if I've got it, like, say I want to make it for someone and, like, for example, I had a blanket I wanted to make for someone's baby, but the baby was a boy, but I didn't want to work with, like, say, blues and greens, and I had this other pattern that it was like going to be worked in like yellows and other like oranges and I was like oh I really want to work with those colors but I needed to do the pattern for the little boy first and I just couldn't get my head around it so do you guys like work by pattern or by color or do you have a method 
sometimes I'm just like, I'll be doing something and I'll just be like, Ugh, that's it, I've had enough. Okay. And coming out to the last stretch. And it really is the last stretch too because it's on the last side. And this is where we're going to colour change, I think. Let's see how many rows. One, two, three, four, five. Yep, we're going to colour change. This is how you start um, the granny square bag. Like, I have a, a picture called Small Mouth Granny Square Bag. Um, there's lots of variations. By no means is the granny square bag an original pattern. Just the way I have done the handles and my opening of the bag, I guess, is to some degree semi-original, but like I said, it's an old pattern and by no means can I claim that it's original. So, because there's lots of patterns for granny square bags out there. Okay, so chain one, then we can slip stitch into our chainless starting stitch. Okay, now we're going to slip stitch across here, and we're going to change colour. Now to do that, I've got some of my colour over here. Here we go. You know, green and gold, good Aussie colours. We're still going to slip stitch, but we're going to actually, I'm going to leave a little bit longer tail than I normally would. We're going to wrap the green around. You can actually make a slip stitch if you want, but I don't really think you need to. You're going to leave your slip stitch on your hook. Okay. Forget your colour for the moment and go in through the chain space. Okay. Get your new colour. Okay. Wrap it over your hook, hold that tight, or with tension, hold your still attached working colour, so in my case yellow, hold that with the new green, pull the green up through, and see how I've got them both over my finger, okay we're going to pull the green through like we did the slip stitch. and. This might be a little bit loose, but we're going to pull the yellow tight and we're going to make a chain one and pull the green tail tight. See? Green tail tight. Now I'm going to hold on to the tail with my thumb and my middle finger. And I'm going to make a chainless starting stitch or you can do your chain three whichever you prefer but this tail will be worked over in the corner so it will get worked underneath and it will you can either eliminate working in ends or you can strengthen the working in of the ends okay so I'm going to do a chainless so I'm holding my yarn and you hold your yarn however you prefer going to tighten that a bit. I've lifted my yarn up and you forgot to mention you always want your hook to be facing down so I go around my hook is still facing down going in making sure not to pick up that tail see my tail is nice and flat against my work and the reason why you want your hook facing down is because you can just easy go over the top of your yarn and pull it through when you yarn over okay once again, a yarn over, well in that case it was a yarn under, pull through the first two loops and pull through the top two loops. And you can see that tail there, I'm going to pull it through the front, is worked underneath. There is the, my apologies, there is the, um, the knot we did with the chain one and the tail comes out over here. So if I pull it, you can see me pulling that 
Can you pulling on that knot? Probably not. <laughs> How many times can I say not in that one sentence? I just said it again. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm going to move the two loops of the bottom chainless. Okay, and I'm going to do another cluster. So once again, it's just it doing exactly the same thing, three stitches, and I'm working over that tail. See how I'm holding that flat? I'm just working my standard, chain three. Okay, I'm going to try and do this more on the side for you so you can see how I'm holding the the yarn tail is flat on the side of my work. I'm yarning over, I'm going in the space, yarning over, pulling up a loop, and my green yarn tail is still there, yarning over, pulling through, and that is now trapped underneath my stitch here. It's a bit hard to see, I'll see if I can zoom in. My yarn tail is now trapped underneath the stitch um, from the front. It's these two loops down here. The green is a lot harder to see because it's, it's darker. You can just see the two on this side of my thumbnail. There is two uh, v stitches. Yeah. Okay. And I'm going to continue my stitch. We'll do that again. Yarn over. I'm holding my yarn tail flat. Going in, yarning over, and that's already trapped there. I'll try and show you from this side. See how when I hold the yarn up, it traps it down. Okay, so pulling through and pulling through. That's two trebles, rounding over, pulling through, pulling through, chain one. And I'm not going to yarn, crochet over these now. So I'm going into my next chain one space and I have pulled my tail away. It doesn't matter if you leave it there because I will show you but it will eventually be um, removed. So at the moment I'm yarning over and around and crocheting over the tail. But it is visible above the stitches. But what we're going to do at the end, I'm just going to use a stitch marker and you just, it will be pulled out. And what you'll do is you've got your yarn needle or where am I? Here we are. You'll get your yarn needle or another smaller crochet hook and you will slide the crochet hook underneath the stitches like this. I'm only under one at the moment. You'll yarn, bring your hook back over and it's almost like a yarn over. I'm doing this backwards. <laughs> and you pull it through. The stitch is extremely loose. Here we go. If I hold it the right way, it might work. Okay, so um, as I said, you would use a smaller hook. So you see how I'm going under all these stitches? It's a bit fiddly. And you would pull that yarn tail through them. And I'm going to turn it around and loosen it up again so it doesn't pull this last stitch all the way over. And it'll now stay there. And if you're not happy with that, you can pull it over and then do it under one or two more stitches. And a little trick to get it to stay hidden, because you don't want a long tail, is you will pull it just a little bit, with a little bit of tension. You chop it off, and then you just go like this. And see how that little bit of yarn there snuck back in? So you pull it, and when you stretch it out, the yarn goes back inside. So we're going to leave that there for the moment. 
and we'll come back and I'll go over that again right at the end. So I'm going to chain one, go in, and we'll do a few more stitches. I need to get some more green yarn off my ball. And I'm now tangled. Okay, so give me a second and I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm going to um, finish this green round and then I'm going to come back and show you another way. If you're going to like do, say, just two colours like yellow, green, yellow, green, yellow, green um, without having to cut off all these tails, it won't be as um, pretty because you'll have yarn running like this. Um, I'll show you this way. You'll have the yarn colours running up the back and it's not too visible but this is what I did um, what I'll show you what I did for the granny small mouth granny bag I don't have a pattern for it because I just haven't written one yet but I will get around to it I promise um, it's not really that simple I just sort of made it up as I went and evened it out um, and I did do one with a larger mouth and um, I do have a, a really bigger one, like a larger one, a duffel sized one, um, and they seem to be pretty popular, so they're a great gift because um, if you go to my Instagram, you'll see a picture of a purple and white one, which I actually gave as a gift, and they're great because, um, you know, for ladies who love handbags, um, myself included, they fold up when you're not using them, <laughs> and they're great for traveling, like, um, they can fit so much stuff in them that they just, yeah, they just, yeah, <laughs> they just hold so much. It's amazing. And you, the, the good thing about them is you can make them as big or as small as you want. Okay, so I'm going to finish this corner. I'll cut this video and then I'll come back when I finish this round and show you how to run your colors. Okay, so that is this corner. I'm going to zoom out. Okay, that's this corner, and when I get back over here, I'll show you how to run your colours without cutting, especially if you're doing a really large project. Okay, be back in a minute. Okay, so I finished my round in green, and this is the one, two, three, four, five, sixth round. Okay, so I've just got to chain one and slip stitch my way across. So I'll zoom in. And I'll try and find the center of the screen. Okay. So, chain one. Starting, standing, so I might loosen that from the back. Okay. See, so you can do that. If you can't get them um, straight away from the front, loosen it from the back. Okay. So we've slip stitched and we're going to slip stitch across now. Once again, sorry, I'm trying to find. I need to put like a spot in the middle, don't I? But when I zoom out, it changes. <laughs> Should put like a piece of tape. Oops, two and okay, so we're about to do a color change, and I'll keep you zoomed in. Okay, so um, we're gonna run colors this time. As you can see, I'm not cutting my colors, I have my yellow down here before is my tail. I'm just going to uh, run this through my stitches. I've just gone weaved in and out of my posts just to, I'm just doing that again, just to get that out of my way. See, 
just see through there and you can see through here. Okay, so this is our last step, slip stitch. I'm going to do a slip stitch in here. We're going to run our colour up. Okay. So tighten that loop. I'm holding on to my yellow. I'm bringing it through. I am holding my green with some tension through my other fingers. It might be a little bit fiddly, but remember you can tighten all your other yarns with your other hand, your hook hand. And I'm just slowly pulling that through and up. Okay, I've let go of my green and I am just tightening that. Okay. And you can see here where I am. Now I am once again, I'm going to do a um, just a slip stitch just to tighten that in place. I'm going to do a chainless starting stitch. So I've pulled it up a little bit taller than my standard uh, treble. I've got my hook facing down. I'm going around the back, going into my stitch, yarning over. Pulling through, yarning over, pulling through two loops. I'm moving my thumb up to hold it so I can let go of this loop up here. Yarning over, pulling through two. And even though you can see that slip stitch at the front up here, I'm still going to move my um, the base over so it won't really be that visible. Like you'll see that little slip, slip of green but it won't be that bad. Um, and I could have, I could have, um, you know, tightened that underneath that stitch, but that would have been tricky. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tie it down underneath my next stitch, so my next treble. So once again, I'm holding the green along my work. Sorry, I'm holding the green along my work and I'm just going to do a treble. Yarning over, pulling through loops, and two more, or one more, sorry. So, and I pull that through. See, so this is uh, where the last slip stitch was in this stitch here and this is where we joined the colour of the second colour and these two stitches over here one and two are actually holding this down. So like I said, this is, I'll move that out of the way, this is the uh, slip stitch and the join we made, looks a bit wonky. This is the other loop, so you see how these two stitches here have two loops? This is the other loop that coincides with this slip stitch to make the chainless starting uh, stitch. Okay, and that will run diagonal up behind your stitches. Now when you work with um, more than two colours, you have to remember to lock it under that first stitch otherwise your second stitch is over here so you'll get your yarn showing I don't have a, another colored piece of yarn um, you'll get your yarn color showing through diagonally can you see that can you see that tiny 
recipes um, I might have. Well, coming from, say, down here. That's our slip stitch there. And you're coming up to join, that's our second colour, next colour. You're coming up to join colours. It will always run diagonal over the scissors a hole here and that's the hole here so you will always need to get it underneath some of these stitches particularly this first one so yeah if you can um, you'll devise a way I mean whether they say necessity is the mother of invention or um, Doris Chan, she's a very popular crochet designer. She says laziness is the mother of invention, and I am I, I agree with that. <laughs> so yeah, so yes. So that's basically just well, I wanted to show you how to run a color without having to cut it off each time. Save you having to um, you know weave in all your ends like all these because you would have ends I mean they might not be as long as this but you know having to go under these ends like this I hate this the center um, but a good thing see how you have this circle in the middle it's quite large I can easily stick my hook in there I hate that uh, a good trick is you can get your yarn needle and you will need a yarn needle and thread it under all of these stitches you know all of these go all the way around till you get back to here and then pull it tight so it will underneath all the stitches like that it'll be in a circle and then you pull it tight and it will tighten up all those stitches and that's like a version of the magic ring and when you get, um, once again, more comfortable with your crochet, you'll learn how to crochet over that tail in a circle. Um, so yeah, you don't have to, if you don't like the magic ring um, or the magic circle, you'll be able to do a chain and then um, crochet over the tail and use the tail to tighten it. My lovely hand motion. That's me pulling the tail tight. <laughs> so yeah. Okay, so that's the um, the granny square, and I know it probably wasn't quite as beginner as I wanted it to be, um, but I hope it was beginner friendly enough. <laughs> if you have any questions, once again, please do let me know, and I will do my best to get back to you as soon as possible. Um, I can um, make like a if you have a pattern I can email you directly you can email me and um, if you need like some video instructions I can get back to you directly I can it will be unedited so it won't be all pretty or anything yeah okay we'll see how we're going okay have fun and um, wait until the intro because that's coming up next and it'll be filming the intro next so it'll go at the beginning okay bye I have visitors now <laughs>